and run this first cue. Scenery moving. Use another cue. This cue is going to close the two flippers and bring them back on. Hi, my name is Chuck Adamanis, and I'm a stage automation engineer. Stage automation involves mechanizing and controlling scenery so that it can run repeatedly, identically, show to show, night after night. You know, conventionally scenery has either been flown in from above or pushed on from the wings, and those were both things that were very easily done manually by stagehands. So by being able to automate items, we can now use bigger scenery, and we can also do things that you just would not have been able to do uh, manually. So my job mostly is to really figure out from the creative team what is it that we want to do, and then to design the machine and the controls that allow us to make that scenery do that effect. This is a control system for Billy Elliot, the first national tour. This is part of our uh, Hudson Scenic Automation System that we call HMC. Um, system set up to run all the effects for the show. The typical process is we here in the shop will get the system set up, basically ready for the operator to use in the theater. Because of the complexity of all this equipment, we want to be able to do as much of the troubleshooting, proving out, debugging here in the shop. You know, we've designed this equipment and we've used it for a long time, but for every show, there's always going to be subtle differences, things we do custom. I think one of the biggest challenges for Billy Elliot you know, in all of the previous incarnations of that show, there were several key scenic elements, the kitchen in Billy's house, that sort of uh, brought on stage through elevators in the floor. And so they came up with this idea of having these flip open walls and this pallet to allow that same scenery, this mostly that will set of kitchen furniture to get it on and off stage that otherwise would have been coming up in an elevator. So this is the down, what we call the downstage flipper wall. And this is actually the motor and gears that cause that wall to be uh, controlled by the automation system. So when I actually run cues, signals are sent down to this control box, and in turn that control box knows how to run this motor, which will actually cause this flipper panel to open and close um, throughout the show. And then finally this entire wall can come on and off stage, and we do that through the use of tracks on the floor here. Connected to those tracks are cables that we in turn have connected to a winch that's built into the floor off stage that can actually track that unit on and off. Certainly I think the origins of all this for me goes back to, you know, as a kid, you know, my mom and I actually came up to New York to see Broadway shows like Les Mis and Phantom, which would have been some of the first big automated shows. And it was always that, wow, like how does it all happen? Like what is going on? How do they make it work? I always thought I wanted to be an architect and was studying architecture through school, but actually was working uh, part-time at the theater and sort of said, you know, wow, look, do you hear all these people that are sort of getting to do all the same sort of creative things that I was feeling like were in architecture, they actually got to go do it, you know, hands-on, make it work, and that was really interesting. So ultimately decided to go back to school to actually study that and uh, went back and got a master's degree in technical theater at Yale and ultimately at the end it worked out that I was able to come here to Hudson and have since spent my time here, you know, originally starting down on the floor, building parts and uh, systems for shows, and then as the years went on, ended up in the engineering department actually drawing and now heading up that automation group of people. For as many hours as I might spend in front of a computer trying to make that all right, there are 10 or 12 people, if not 100 people on the shop floor that are gonna work many, many more hours than I did to actually construct it, put it together, make it function. Um, and a lot of those people have been doing this for a lot longer than I have. So I am dependent and reliant on their skills as craftsmen to just be able to say, yeah, that idea is okay, but can we do it this way? Certainly Lion King is, was a sort of crowning you know, moment for Hudson. First big automation system we ever did was the original Lion King for New York. And you know, if Pride Rock doesn't come up out of the stage for Lion King, it's not the same show. Right? It doesn't really look that complicated at the end of the day, and yet when it's in the midst of all these other scenic elements and lit well and has a full costume cast in front of it, it's this incredibly magical thing that really does work for the show. Some of the best automation in some of these shows is 
is used very little. It's that one or two big moments. Without a doubt, I'd say the biggest challenge of a project that I've been involved with was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when we did the flying car. And so all of the machinery, all of the wires, you know, all of this equipment that was under there holding that car up kind of just perfectly melted away. And to have so much effort put into this one effect of the car flying out over the audience was pretty remarkable. Recently, the, without a doubt, the biggest change we've seen in, I think, theater, and certainly it affects all of the scenery, is the use of video. One of the last big projects we did, Dreamgirls, uh, that's currently on tour in America, you know, has, we have video panels that actually are being moved with automation. So that's the big change I think we'll see on automation in the future, is that there'll be a much, much more desire from all of the creative departments, be it video or lighting and audio and everybody, to integrate those systems so that we can very seamlessly do things that right now we can't do. I could certainly be using all the same equipment, same skills and everything, and be designing an assembly line for a factory or a way a package gets cartoned up. Uh, the thing that's wonderful about this is when you actually go to the theater and you get to see one of these things, it really still, I, even I still can go and have these moments of like, wow, like, how does it all work? And, and I know how it works. That's what makes this work exciting and fun and worth the long hours and the long days and the late nights because it is exciting and it is sort of live and happening every night.